Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, my name's Camel, and today we're going to have a look at Obsidian's trailer for their new game called The Outer Worlds. Obsidian are the guys that made Fallout New Vegas, which in my opinion is the best Fallout game to date, and the guys that actually founded the Fallout universe now work at Obsidian. So if you like what Fallout was, then you should probably be excited for this game, but uh, you can make up your own mind after checking this out. Now if you haven't seen the trailer already, I'll put a link in the description and a card on screen now. I'd suggest you watch it first so I'm not constantly interrupting and talking over it if you're just trying to watch it for the first time. This is Camel from the future interjecting into this video as, as I was recording the overview or whatever of the trailer, Obsidian actually updated the website for The Outer Worlds that gave a little bit of context for the game and context for the trailer. So I'm gonna read what's on the website first and it will help us understand the trailer a lot more. And I'll show you the four images they put on the website as well while I read this. So all it says on the website is, The Outer Worlds is a new single player, first person sci-fi RPG from Obsidian Entertainment and Private Division. Lost in transit while on a colonist ship bound for the furthest edge of the galaxy, you awake decades later only to find yourself in the midst of a deep conspiracy threatening to destroy the Halicon colony. As you explore the furthest reaches of space and encounter various factions, all vying for power, the character you decide to become will determine how this player-driven story unfolds. In the corporate equation for the colony, you are the unplanned variable. So there's that, we now have much better contacts for the trailer, and here is the overview. Ah. ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? One question first. Are you feeling anything that can be construed as explosive cell death? No? Wonderful. Let's get started. Now, interestingly, the crazy scientist dude, he drew a symbol on the, the window in the condensation. I don't know if that means anything. I've watched the trailer many times and I haven't been able to find this symbol again. I don't know what that is. So our character appears to be in some kind of cryopod. The dude's talking, then it opens, it's nighttime, and we come out into this lush, verdant, wonderful looking world, and we look up, and it's space. So, important things to take note of. We've got trees, a specific type of like alpine looking tree. We have these red trees. We've got a city, we've got spaceships going around. The planets, we're on a planet. Then there is another planet with a ring around it. Then in the distance, there is a third smaller planet. Keep that in mind because I think that this game is based on three different planets rather than trekking across the universe to a billion jillion planets. So all those shots were in the same town called Edgewater, there's a bunch of advertising, nothing too important there. But again, like I said, I think this is set on three different planets, so I think Edgewater is one of the main cities, if you will, of one of the planets that we'll get to explore. You'll see it constantly throughout this video, but the character design and like the detail and art direction of all the costumes are really, really gorgeous. Might go into more detail at the end of the video, but I'm not going to pause and look at every costume. They all look really nice and I love the textures and the details of the costumes. I will just point out though that in the background we have those alpine trees again. Again suggesting that I think this is on the same planet as the original shot with the alpine trees. Here we do see our first gun, it looks quite tactile, it looks earth-like. It looks like something that you might find in a Fallout game actually. This is cool because so far the trailer has it looks really fun, but it doesn't have like a gritty edge yet. Like if you look at the Rage 2 trailers, it looks gritty, it looks gory, it looks like, you know, an R-rated Mad Max thing. So far this looks kind of friendly and childlike, but to see a, a big old gun, that to me is a good sign that this is going to be a bit more uh, than the art style might portray. Now, this is our character. We've been thought out by the mad scientist guy. A few things. His buttocks are very impressive. On his back, there is a symbol that says hope. Don't know what this is. Haven't seen it at any other point throughout the trailer. But I would like you to take notice of the city in the background. So far, throughout the trailer, we haven't seen skyscrapers, if you would call them. In all the other shots of all the other towns, it seems to be, you know, the buildings are kind of X high. These are unknown height because they're so tall. Don't know where that's based. So here's a shot of a town that I don't think we've seen yet. And again, Alpine. Alpine foliage. 
Alpine trees. I do believe we are still on the same planet. I don't think we're seeing a billion different planets in this game. This is where I also think it draws the line that this isn't an open world exploration game. I could be totally wrong, but if we look at the like detail, the amount of detail with the trees and all the plants and logs and whatever placed around the town, if we look in the background, like over the hill, it's just blank. It's blank, undecorated textures. Which is fine if we're not going to explore there, but that would mean that we're not going to explore there. That means we wouldn't be able to walk over that hill and climb that mountain. Again, pure conjecture, but the fact it has no assets on it makes me think that we're going to be refined to certain areas instead of just wandering planets. Nothing super exciting, but we've got the alpine trees with the red trees still on the same planet, and in the background we have that moon looking- it's moon like in texture, with the ring around it. Look, I get it. Taking on the corporation has left us with two choices, bad and worse. But you have to choose. And you have to choose now. You know you didn't have to shoot either one, right? And there it is. It's been reinforced, it's been laid out very plain and simply for us. Player character choice. Choice and effect. Quick, you have to make a decision. Right now. All right, boom. Yeah, you didn't have to kill him. You didn't have to kill either of them. This is Obsidian letting us know the player choice is gonna be a big part of this game. Cause and effect. Something that, uh, in my humble opinion, has made Fallout New Vegas stand out above Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. And, <laughs> Let's not talk about 76. I would also like to point out that when you shoot that dude, blood spatters onto the lady next to him, and she looks all horrified and then she vomits. I think this is good and implies there's going to be a level of grit. So although the humor direction and the art style might seem like a kind of goofy, friendly playground, the fact we saw that giant carbine shooting before and now this dude's head's been blown off and the woman's covered in blood and spewing, Hopefully that means we're going to get down and dirty and it's going to be a bit grittier than the visuals are letting on. But we will rewind because there is a shot in there where we get to see a, what I think to be, a different planet. One of the three planets, if there are three planets. It's very red, it's got red coral-like rocks and we also have these weird, again, quite coral-like trees. And our dude is also holding a melee weapon which we find out later is a big scythe. So here it gets exciting. We have a spaceship, but then it cuts to the mad scientist jumping in the pilot seat. Then we have the spaceship in space. I don't know if we will be flying that spaceship. The reason I say that is it shows the spaceship, shows someone else getting in the pilot seat, then shows it in space. It also doesn't show the spaceship flying from like a first person perspective at any point, so I don't know if we will actually get to jump in a spaceship and fly around. Now, I will point out that the planet in the background is a planet we haven't seen in the sky yet. It's kind of green and it has a red ring around it. I do believe that that is the planet that we've been standing on throughout the first half of this trailer. So here's that coral planet again, I'll just call it that. It looks really cool. Again, art design looks cool. Here we see our first creature, up close anyway. Honestly, I don't know what to say. It looks like a alien creature. It looks cool, well designed, but I honestly don't know how to critique or comment on alien creatures. I will point out that the dude at the start on his shoulder has an Auntie Cleo advertisement. Auntie Cleo is like a company or a business or something. In this game, we see signs for Auntie Cleo all throughout the trailer. And then the dude at the end also has an Auntie Cleo thing on his shoulder as well. So Auntie Cleo might be a faction, I don't know. Ooh, more creatures. So we're back on the Alpine planet with the red trees. We've got some mushrooms and we have a caterpie. Then we've got like a bee times an ant back on the coral planet, again, if it is a different planet. And behind the bee ant thing, there's like a, a dog looking guy. Again, not too sure how to comment on alien creatures. They look cool. Okay, two things I want to point out. You know when we were in space and we could see the green planet with the red ring? Well, we're standing on the planet that I believe to be the green planet, and if we look in the top right hand corner, there is a giant planetary red ring. The reason it would be so big is because we're standing on the planet that the ring belongs to. Red ring equals us on the green planet. Now the other thing, I don't really know what this is, but if we look on that planet, there's this green light that moves across it as time passes. And the other planet in the top left hand corner also has this green light that passes across it as time passes. 
I have no idea what that is. Surely if there was like a green sun, it would be lighting them up and it wouldn't be nighttime on that side of those planets, right? I don't know what that is. So we're on Alpine planet again. We see the little, a new dude, a gorilla monkey stone guy. Uh, we see the scythe again, the weapon. Now something I would like to point out that makes me kind of go, oh, is the lack of environmental detail. There's no dressing. I mean, the left hand side of this shot is purely blank texture. There isn't a shrub or a rock in sight, which again makes me think that this game will have not much to do with exploration. It'll be much more story driven. Go to this location for this story reason rather than dude, here's a big open world, just go and explore. Because if it is exploration based and we have just blank hills like this, meh. There's that humor again that makes you feel like this game might not be that gritty. <laughs> this shot just makes me laugh because all I can see is Skyrim. All I can see is the Wabajack and an empty hand. Just even the way the hand is posed looks identical to what your offhand looks like in Skyrim when you're holding a staff. Um, and ironically, the dude seems to be carrying some kind of electrified staff, which I would imagine will do the same thing a staff will do in Skyrim, shoot electricity. Looks gorgeous, apart from that, I have nothing else to say. Now this bit's weird to me because I've only been able to notice two different ecosystems. The kind of alpine looking stuff and the red coral looking stuff. I don't know if that's two ecosystems on the same planet, I don't know if it's two different ecosystems on two different planets, but all we've seen is at the most two different planets throughout this trailer, which of course would mean that the game is going to be based on these two planets, right? But then we get this shot, where we get a spaceship going into hyperdrive, super jump, warp speed, whatever you want to call it, which is a weird note to end on if we're not going to be doing that in the game. So I don't know if we're going to be traveling to a billion, zillion different planets via light speed, or if it's going to be based on the two or three planets that we see throughout the trailer. It's weird. I'm not too sure what this game is. It definitely looks like a very heavy choice based RPG. I don't know what the plot is. I mean, they name a few factions throughout the trailer and the people living on the outer rim getting screwed by corporations like sounds like keyword stuff but i don't really know how to piece that together i don't know who we are i don't know who the scientist is i don't know if it's open world exploration i don't know if it's small area based exploration i don't even know if there's exploration at all i don't know if it's all story based going through buildings i don't know how much of it is going to be combat based whether you can get your own spaceship and fly around if you can visit 400 planets or if you can visit two planets. The only real things we can tell so far is we're in space on potentially two different planets and it's an RPG that seems to be choice based. It's kind of hard to get hyped or unhyped around it just because there's so little information. But visually I'm definitely getting like slight Rage 2 vibes mixed with No Man's Sky. Very heavy No Man's Sky vibes mixed in with something else that I can't even name. Maybe a slight Bioshock feel, especially with all the advertisements have that like 1920s look to them or 1890s, whatever year you want to point out. But overall, it's an Obsidian game. Obsidian has a track record that is very, very strong. So because of that, I'm personally excited for this game, but I'm going to wait until, you know, the developers talk about it and I actually get to scope out what the game's like instead of building this ideal game in my head and then no matter what they say, it'll never meet that expectation. So I am, of course, very interested to hear what you have to say about this trailer, whether you're excited, why you're excited, and if you notice any key points throughout this trailer that you think I've missed. There are a few things like names on buildings and there's a name on one of the guns, but I don't think these things are important. But with all that said, here's a special treat. I'm gonna read the advertisement at the end of the trailer out for you because it's impossible to read normally. Space's choice is not responsible for any feeling of vertigo, wonder, or hunger you may have experienced while watching this advertisement. Space's choice is a wholly owned subsidiary of Universal Defense Logistics. By watching this, the viewer absolves Space's choice of any liability throughout the universe until the end of time. This advertisement was tested on animals and found 89.5% safe for human viewing. However, it is unsafe to view this advertisement while under the influence of 
of Adrena time. Dia, uh, I'm not reading that word, and its derivatives. The slogans, it's not the best choice, it's the Spaces choice. Taste the freedom with Spaces choice, from Spaces choice, of course, and you've tried the best, now try the rest, are trademarked and owned by Universal Defense Logistics and may not be used without a form. 1165SDL-UDL, and a commitment of servitude of no less than 10 years. This advertisement is not to be enjoyed, discussed or referenced on company time. Spaces Choice is not associated with Trucker's Choice, and anyone who claims otherwise will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Five candors, two raptidans, and a genetically unidentifiable space organism were all harmed during the making of this advertisement. This advertisement was filmed on Spaces Choice 100% Pure Acetate. If this advertisement begins to smoke, please withdraw to a safe distance and continue viewing. Any endorsement of Spaces Choice by the Halicon Corporation board conveyed by this advertisement is implied but not expressed. Warning, pregnant women, the elderly, and anyone who has eaten in the last two hours should avoid prolonged exposure to this advertisement. This advertisement should not be construed to represent any warranty or guarantee regardless of the actual words used or implied in the foregoing. Due to a recent court decision, Spaces Choice is contractually obliged to state that Auntie Cleo products do not contain cyanide, cyst pig gastric juices, mercury, sprat intestines, or human body parts despite any previous claims made to the contrary by Spaces Choice. Any similarity to any persons living dead or alive in hibernation is purely coincidental. Spaces Choice has made the legally required minimum effort to ensure that the information contained in this advertisement is correct at the time of its release. Nothing in this advertisement is intended as a substitute for the medical advice of physicians. And remember, Spaces Choice pre-sliced bread tastes fresh because it was. And there it is, The Outer Worlds. Keen to hear what you have to say about it, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. See you there. it and started selling it at ludicrously inflated prices. And the rest of your fellow settlers? Abandoned on the edge of the colony. I'd save them myself, but the board's got a bounty on my head. So, that's why I thought you out. You appear capable.